Hello there everybody. Today, I'll be talking about this PC VR solution for less than $20 and what it's like to use. So is PC gaming in VR with a mobile VR headset even any good? I guess we'll find out. So in order to do this, you'll need a mobile VR headset such as a Google Cardboard or Gear VR. I'm using the RK3 Plus VR case which I did a review of that you can check out. You'll also need a smartphone and the Trinus VR software on both your computer and your phone, which can be free, but you will get interruptions prompting you to pay $10 for it every 10 minutes, which you can do, but it's not necessary. Keep in mind that while this works on both iOS and Android, you can only use USB tethering with Android if you have it enabled. But I'm more interested in what it's like to run Trinus wirelessly with the iPhone. Once you have the software downloaded on both your computer and the app on your phone, you can have them connected by clicking on the power buttons on both the phone and computer, and it should work if both the devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi. Initially, the image that is displayed on the phone shouldn't be the full desktop, but it should be whatever window you have selected, and if you move your head, it should mirror mouse movement if you have your sensor mode selected to mouse. In order to do some gaming, however, you'll need to download SteamVR. Then once you've done that, you should set your capture mode in Trinus to SteamVR, whereupon Steam will recognize your phone as a headset. Follow the setup procedure, and you should have now turned your phone and mobile headset into a full-on SteamVR headset. Something that you have to remember when using Trinus is that you should hold your phone in the same position that looking straight would be. And if you need to reset where looking straight is at any time, you can set a hotkey for it in the Sensors tab in Trinus. When it comes to setting up playing in VR after the initial downloads and such, there can be some issues such as inverted controls, the phone having an upside down image which can be fixed by turning your phone upside down obviously, or having the image projected onto your phone simply not be zoomed in correctly. But there is a help section in the Trina software that has provided some answers. It proved to be helpful in a couple instances and is generally helpful with SteamVR and Trina setup. There is some customization in the Trinus software, but the main thing that you can do is set up different ways of connecting your headset to your computer. So you can use the headset wirelessly with both Android and iOS, but your computer should at least be connected to the Wi-Fi router directly. Trinus can also activate a hotspot, and if you have an Android, you can use the USB tethering feature and use the headset completely wired. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you should enable NVIDIA optimization in Trinus. So that's the basic setup, but what is it actually like to game with $20 VR? Well, since there are no motion controllers or external motion trackers, you're pretty much confined to using a standard game controller like the Xbox One controller for gaming. That means that when searching for games in the Steam library, you'll need to select gamepad only games. There are a ton of free games that are available, which is nice for a VR experience that's as cheap as this. There are games that you might already own that are VR compatible, but not necessarily VR limited like Subnautica or Project Cars. First off, checking out Project Cars, the experience was pretty good. Even in wireless mode, the graphics were okay, and while there was some choppiness throughout gameplay, it wasn't anything that was game breaking. However, choppiness began to get progressively more noticeable, but upon a quick restart, the game was running pretty well. This game in particular was one that I found interesting based on the fact that I would used this game when I was reviewing the HTC Vive. I mentioned that in a game like this where one is sitting and using a controller anyway that something like the Vive, which goes for $800, isn't worth it based on the fact that the Vive was meant for more motion oriented gaming. And the fact that for more than 40 times less than the Vive you can get a VR experience that is more sitting and gamepad oriented is great news for budget users. Next up, I decided to check out the Deus Ex Mankind Divided VR experience, which is a free showcase for Deus Ex and the environments that you'd encounter in the actual game. Now, This would be way more fun if you could actually walk around, but nonetheless it's pretty interesting. I would recommend that you stand up for this one though, because even though you are moving with the controller's joystick, standing up and looking all around you makes more sense than sitting. Unlike Project Cars, there was very little choppiness when moving around, and even when there was, it wasn't all that noticeable. 
And finally, I played the demo for Redout, a fast-paced VR racing game. I know it was only a demo, but if you have a VR headset, you should check this game out because it's pretty fun and it can be challenging at first when you realize how different this is from other traditional racing games, especially when you're playing in VR. Even though this was extremely fast-paced, I experienced very little choppiness in-game which is pretty good for a game like this. So what's my conclusion for $20 VR? I'd say if you have the equipment you'd already need like a gaming PC, controller, and a phone, then picking up a cheap VR headset meant for mobile may not be a bad idea. Even if the experience can be flawed at times with the occasional connection issues, needing to pay another $10 if you want to get rid of Trinus interruptions while you're playing, or odd problems like inverted screens while loading Trinus, when Trinus and a cheap VR headset work, they work really well, and since I did all my testing over a wireless connection, it shows just how good of a deal this all really is. But you gotta remember that the only reason this is $20 is because I had everything else I needed to play. So I think the best uses for this type of experience would be for free or cheaper VR games that only require a gamepad, or for a PC gamer that wants to try a cheap PC VR alternative before getting something more high-end like a Rift or a Vive. If you enjoyed, then drop a like. If you want to see some more, then click that subscribe button. Of course, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.